It's tough out there these days, um, but the, you know, the fun part is that we literally can invest in just about anything in the alternative space, right? The only thing we don't do is compete with our own firm, um, but beyond that, we are open to just about anything that we think you know, makes sense out there. I'd say today we're spending a lot of time in the telecom space, uh, so you know, fiber and cellular towers and spectrum, um, data centers, we just think the mega trends that are behind that industry um, really make it a very attractive place to invest. What are those mega trends? How many phones do you have? How much data do you consume per day? And how much is that not just proliferating um, per person, but if you think about the penetration rates all across the globe, people who couldn't communicate in certain ways before are now getting movies downloaded to their phone in areas that they couldn't even get a phone call you know, five, ten years ago. So we just see just massive data proliferation everywhere. We don't see any signs of that slowing at all. And so the ability to be able to invest um, all across the globe, actually, um, and in places that we see even higher growth rates, a lot of times you see um, economies, right, where they're getting much more going in towards the middle class. And what are those folks doing? They're communicating more. They're consuming media differently. And um, we're very excited to continue to, to invest in that space. Now, you've, you've self-described this job as trying to explore <laughs> and invest in some of the craziest ideas out there. What's the craziest one that you've actually put money to work in? You know, it's funny. I, I made that comment, I don't know, a lot of years ago because I was, I was trying to make the point that we'll invest in anything. We're very open-minded. The only negative point about that is you can imagine how many phone calls I get <laughs> with the most bizarre you know, sort of investment ideas that I've ever heard. And I have to politely say, well, you know, yes, I'm very open-minded, but I don't really think that's going to work for us. But I mean, literally, I've been pitched everything from, you know, figuring out how to get, uh, you know, sheep to produce, you know, their goods in a different way, like literally like the wool off the sheep. And I'm like, okay, I don't really understand how to deal with that. Um, to people who have invented things and say, well, can't you back me? I've got this great new invention that I've just come up with and, you know, I need capital. And you seem like the kind of group or person that would like listen and back us. And we're sort of like, okay, well, we do look at everything, but let's try to bring it, you know, into a little bit more of an investable uh, scenario. So again, we are open-minded. We are looking both from a geographic perspective, an industry perspective, a structure perspective, um, at just about everything, but at the same time, you know, actually when you look at our investments, they're, they're quite rational. So you're short cheap. <laughs> I, I don't know what I have. I'm just like, I can't really deal with that. <laughs> now this, this group that you're in was started post-financial crisis. Correct. We so, started it in the summer of really 2012. Given so. kind of the lack of liquidity that you operate in and the kind of different risk reward metrics, what do you expect to happen during the next downturn with regard to tech ops? You know, it's really interesting because I, I say to this to, to my own investors, um, we've been in an environment which for the last five years, asset prices have generally gone up, risk premiums have generally gone down. We actually look for dislocation. We're looking for things that are, are dislocated or other people might not uh, think are particularly interesting and we have a different angle or a different thought process around them. And it hasn't been, you know, an incredible environment for that. So in the next downturn, whenever that might be, I actually think that you're going to see from my team anyway, uh, a level of excitement in the sense of being able to find value in places that maybe didn't exist before. And, you know, real dislocations in various markets or asset classes that we feel like we can generate, you know, incremental alpha from. All of that said, we have been finding really interesting things in a market that hasn't been particularly dislocated over the last few years. Although you always get pockets, it's finance. There's, there's pockets of dislocation all the time. You know, I use this as an example to folks, right now the energy space is booming, but it wasn't that long ago when we had oil in the 20s and you had huge dislocation towards the back end of 15 into 16 in terms of the most recent example of that. And to be ready and to be able to jump in and make investments in that space where you have a longer term view, but the shorter term dislocation uh, in the particular markets creates real, you know, real uh, potential for high returns. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.